Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Seekers of the Supernatural. I'm your host, Tony Spira, with host Ed and Lorraine Warren, and a special guest tonight, Miss Mrs. Gail Martin, correct? Yes. Mrs. Mm -hmm. Gail Martin, mm -hmm. from Brookfield, who had a unique experience happen to her about 13 years ago. And what I'd like to do on this show is to start out first prefacing with Ed and Lorraine. The show is basically going to be about spirit photography and ghosts, things of that nature. Uh, I'd like to start out with Ed and Lorraine explaining what happened in this photograph that Gail was involved in. Well, um, Gail came to us as a student. But prior to coming to us, Tony, she had attended a lecture the three of us had given in uh, Monroe, Monroe. Am I right? Mm -hmm. In Monroe. And she gave Ed a little photograph, mm -hmm. a little small 3 by 5 photograph. And it showed a woman, the spirit of a woman, mm -hmm. standing next to her in her yard. I was intrigued by that photograph. And I took it, and I had a slide made of it. And I brought it home and looked at it. And you could make out now on the slide all of the detail of this elderly woman. You could make out the fact that she was wearing like some sort of a dressing gown and a house coat over it. And she is looking at at, uh, at um, Gail. We have a slide of that they can put it on. Yeah, we have, and she is looking at her and she is digging in her garden. Now Gail becomes a student. I never connected at all. I didn't connect the same person who gave the photograph. She's a person in the photograph. That she was the person in the photograph. Oh, I see. Because, Tony, you're looking at the ghost more than you're looking at the other person. And then she mentioned one night in class that she had another photograph taken moments later. <laughs> now, the history of all of this is really phenomenal. But I'll, I'll let, I think Gail should tell that okay. story. I think it'd be good about if she could explain her experiences yeah, the before we see that slide, I think, I think that'd be nice. Yeah, well, we, we bought a cottage, and we did a lot of construction on it, made it into a house. Mm. And this picture was taken during that construction. Okay. Um, the, from what we can gather about it, the, we believe that the woman is a woman that owned the property uh, before we did. Okay. And we tried to get a little bit of background on her because we really can't recognize who she is. Um, we just know it's nobody that we know. So we reached the niece of the woman that owned that property, who we believe this is. And we're trying to get a little bit more information about her to, mm -hmm. to verify you know, who it actually Jamie, is. <clears throat> what did you think of the a picture when you first seen it? Well, we were so busy working, and we didn't really give it a lot of thought. I, initially, we, we kind of laughed about it because it looked like a statue <laughs> standing next to me. And we just figured it was a double exposure Mm -hmm. um, and really didn't pay a lot of attention to it. And imagine how many people viewing this think psychic photographs are double exposures, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I had seen your lecture in Monroe, uh -huh. and then I said, gee, with the pictures that you had shown, I said, I, I have a picture like that at home, too. So that next day, I went and dug it out, and uh, I had the two of them there. I had forgotten that they were both there. That, that's the incredible thing about this, Gail, mm -hmm. is that, number one, this spirit woman is looking at you. She looks kind of amused over the fact that you're digging in that property. And then the second shot, you're laughing because your husband said something funny to you. Mm -hmm. And this woman has actually got her hand up to her mouth and she's laughing, which shows that the spirit is very aware of what you're saying and what you're doing. And that's incredible. You know, we have two pictures like that, large ones, but we do have a slide, which they'll see the first picture. I know it's going to come up there sometime. Okay, well, I think, I think before we see the slide, uh, I don't know if yeah. we could even focus in on this. I think, I think they're going to put the slide up so I won't be able to show this. No. So I think we'll see the slide first, and then we'll look at this. Maybe this would be a better shot. I'm not sure which would be better. Better. I don't know but, which was going um, to be better. About 13 better. years ago, it was taken. Here, here it, was it taken. is. Here, okay, here it, it is, is, Tony. Now, you see that Gail is higher than that woman, but Gail 
is is on a pile of dirt mm -hmm. she's up and she is digging and the woman is looking down at her what she is doing now this woman had all sorts of gardens mm -hmm. and things in this area and but there were so many sentimental attachments to this particular property the house that Gail is living in we believe is the house that that woman built for her son who was a doctor for him to use as a piece of summer property to get away from his hectic practice in New York and she idolized mm. this man it was her only child and she idolized him and built this place for him on her property. Oh, okay. On her property, and so he was close to her. Now, something that was of tremendous interest to him were children. Mm -hmm. They were tremendous interest. Imagine now, Gail has a daycare. Well, ch children were hmm. tremendous interest to this doctor. So this one summer during the polio epidemic he <coughs> was at a children's camp when he contacted polio and died three days later so you can imagine how tragic that had to be for his mother and that in itself tragedies create the ghost syndrome and that in itself would cause her to remain there Mm -hmm. But she probably didn't show herself, Tony. She probably remained dormant mm. in that area because no one was there. So if you had to guess, Lorraine, you would, you would guess that that is the mother of that doctor? Yes, yes. <coughs> I feel that very I think, strongly. I think one of the interesting things, too, is the fact that when people start renovations on a house, mm -hmm. everything could be great up until that point. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden they start knocking walls down, putting doors and windows over here and then the hauntings start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The spirits that were in that house yeah. are very upset about the fact that where they used to go through a doorway, now there's a wall. Mm -hmm. you know, and where there was a window, there is no window. Right. So this even gets more confusing mm -hmm. to that spirit, and that's when we have what we call infestation, which means the beginning of a haunting. Now this lady is watching you dig, and she's very interested in what you're doing. The second picture, if we yeah. could hold well, that up, Tony. They're going to show the second slide, aren't they? Yeah. Maybe it's easier for me to hold it up. See it here? Well, this way. Okay, I guess you don't no, have no, a second no, half. No, it's on no. here. Here it okay. is. It's right there, Tony. All right, well, I don't know if we can uh, see it, but, uh, but why don't you hold it, Lorraine? All right, let me. That's perfect. Um, Just hold it straight out. Straight okay. out. Oh, that's for fine. this camera. Yep. All right, now that's the second photograph. And you that, zoom in on that? That was taken. Um, I, don't, I don't know if she can, but maybe uh, she can zoom in on it now. Try that. That, that was taken just moments after the first one. Now, as you notice, Gail turns around and Gail is smiling and because her husband is saying something funny. So at that point, the woman is smiling and she puts her hand up to her mouth in that manner. These are two exceptionally remarkable sight And she looks like an elderly woman who would dress that way they used to put the uh, house coats house over their dressing gown. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. It is an amazing it is. Have you amazing ever heard show. anything in the house or felt there was a presence there? I, I can't say I have, no. No. But no. see, there's where she seems to be. She That must have been her love, is out in the yard, in the garden, and now you're doing something to improve that after all of these years probably of neglect. Now you're going to be fixing it. And I believe that that is the reason she's there. Well, I hope I she's really happy with what we're doing there anyway. Yeah, I well, believe. Well, she wasn't. She'd go, <laughs> <laughs> She'd make her presence known in other ways. But yes, she would. She would. We know but, that. But I feel she must be happy with you. You know, she may never show herself again like this. But the important thing is that when you began to do this work, that you were going to improve. You were going to bring something back that had been there before. Mm -hmm.
and I think that's what's important. It makes me feel at ease to see there's a smile on her face. I don't yeah, blame right. her. Yeah, and there very is a comforting. Smile. I know. And she's when happy with the situation. She's very happy with the situation, and it does make you feel good. Mm. It really does. It really makes you feel so good to see that. Now our next slide is on your list there, Tony? Uh, that's, the, that's the one at Carousel, okay, I think. Okay, there's a young couple with a ghost in the uh, okay, back that's of the Carousel garden. That's the Carousel. Okay, so we can show that. It shows a young slide. couple having their picture taken, mm -hmm. and in the background, you'll see a ghostly figure, which is that we, we feel of Ruth. Right, now, there, it is. there are two women, Ed. There, that's not a couple. The man was taking it. The that looks like a man to me on the right there. No, there are two girls, and uh, they're they, <laughs> they're taking I'm not getting the, in the middle of this. <laughs> the man is taking the photograph. Now that is the room that we use as as a classroom. And her bedroom, what was once Ruth's bedroom, is very close to there. Mm -hmm. Now for some reason there was a very definite law of attraction that brought about that particular photograph. I think, we, I think we actually didn't you just cut off the top of the ghost? Yeah. Yeah, they cut off the top they of the ghost. It was kind of. That's cut okay. Off. Uh, That's all right. If we can see this, the third slide, I think it is the couple who just moved into oh, a that new house was, and yep. saw a ghost. Just, that was just in moved into a brand new home and mm -hmm. they heard all kinds of strange sounds and footsteps and mm -hmm. they'd hear banging, knockings, and they took pictures in there. And this picture that you're going to look at right now, here's their ghost. Couple but, who just moved in. But now they that was taken just to the right there. In, to the right. Above the chair, right? Right above the chair. Right. Now this is in the lowest level of that property. But they did have a lot unlike Gale, they had all sorts of infestation. But as you see here, you see that foggy luminescent form of a ghost. Nothing quite as beautiful well, as shows Gale. That. The spirit that showed itself to you is very happy with what's going on mm -hmm. because it never performed any kind of supernatural phenomenon no, in your no, home. No, no, that's wonderful. But You're in this house here, these people right away experience all kinds of sounds and everything. Hmm. But, hmm. but they had built the house. The, peop the, uh, uh, the people that bought this home, the new people that bought this home in Trumbull, moved into a house where the owners had been there for years and built the house. Oh. So the vibrations were really built up from hmm. th that family that preceded them. Okay, the next and slide, uh, you can maybe talk about this one a little bit, is Providence Ghost outside? Oh yeah, that was a very interesting case in Providence, Rhode Island. We took a number of pictures of ghosts. We didn't, but people that lived there did. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was kind of a sad story. There was once a house where they take these pictures and in that house lived a couple during World War II. The man uh, apparently uh, had been, um, well, uh, dead, and, he, and then he, they said that he didn't die. And oh, this is Dur this is the um, the sale of the He had been listed man. as missing in action, he, he, dead. He, no, he would, he, his wife was informed that he was killed in action, not yeah. even missing that he was actually killed in action. And then a week later she committed suicide. She committed suicide and one week after that he was found alive. Oh, but no one ever occupied that cottage. So Rob, if we could see that slide. No one ever occupied that cottage again. Yeah, huh? Now that looks like uh, a That's man. Funny. Yes. But we have other photographs which look like a woman. Yes, we so do. So where you have one spirit, you, you have, have many other spirits. You have more than one, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. The next slide says that it's got two slides and of ghosts in a cathedral. There's oh, a yeah. long shot and a close-up. We'll see oh, yeah, the how long? many ghost hunters we got out there. No, that's if you look at this slide now, I want you to see. No, no don't no, point it no, out no. to them. Don't do that. Let them see where the man is. There's a yeah. man. He's right there in that picture. And if you can see him, you're a... Certified ghost hunter. If you can't, we'll show you the next slide, which shows where he's at. But he's very plain, and I'm looking at him yeah. right here. Okay, Marianne, why don't you uh, go to the next slide, and we'll focus on that. Yeah, go to the next one. There, there he, he is. is. See, right in the oh. corner, and you see him, and that's in the cathedral. Now, remember that the cathedrals, well, buildings in the United Kingdom are extremely old. 
And the more time that we spend there doing our research, the more we become aware of, of really the bloody history concerning that country. Although it is absolutely beautiful and we love it, it seems that every time we go now and we become involved in some new type of an investigation, uh, we find out more bloody history of the area. Well, for but instance, uh, when we were up in uh, a small village called Waternish, we didn't realize it, but there's a, a church that has been there for about 600 years. Just the ruins are left, and there's a cemetery. But in that church, about 200 years ago, there was over 100 people burnt to death. They were all herded in there like cattle and burnt to death. So you can imagine the terrible tragedy that occurred well, there. The fires just oh. happened, to, happened in the no, church? No, no, they, they were, set it on fire, they were, Tony. They were prisoners, men, women, and children. They put them in there, and it, it was a clan, Scott clan. And uh, I think it was the The O'Donnell's, McDonald's and the McDonald's, Campbells. Right? Yeah, the McDonald's and the Campbells. And the Campbells were burnt to death in that church. So you can imagine the, the terrible things that go on there. Do you think the most hauntings occur like in places like United Kingdom compared to here? Yes. Oh, yes, Tony. Wherever there's I mean, tragedy. Wherever there's tragedy. I mean, we've had our share of, of that type of tragic history in this country, but we're not as old, Tony. So, I mean, the older the area, the more chance of tragedies. You know, our greatest thing is the witch trials. Well, you, you go through the uh, highlands of Scotland, and there have been people who have actually seen battles between different clans. Uh, they materialize as sort of like what they call retrocognition, going back into time. And they actually see these, these battles all around them, and then they just disappear. Didn't you once uh, say to me that you saw like a bunch of soldiers or something in Scotland, and you didn't know where they came from? What, was oh, that Scotland? No, they were Vikings, Tony. Viking, Viking. The Vikings, yeah, we was, still don't know, Tony. Where was that? Was that in the United States? Well, we, were, we yes. were way up in northwest Scotland, and we had another couple with us, and we got lost. Up in the mountains, we were looking for stags. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning. But 2 o'clock in the morning there is like 3 o'clock in the afternoon here. It's so light. And we're going down this dirt road in a forest. And all of a sudden, here comes a, a group of people. And they have Vikings costumes on. At least that's what we thought. They had the uh, hats with the big horns on it and the, the uh, fur capes. And they had spears. But they didn't seem to pay much attention to us. Now, being in the work that we are, I would immediately think, well, this is very strange. They could be ghosts. But we knew they weren't ghosts because, you know, they were as solid as we were. And probably about 20 yards from where we were, they had a tent, which was a Viking tent. And uh, this one guy was taking hatchets and throwing them at the trees. Mm -hmm. And I thought, look, they don't even pay attention to us. But to this day, we don't know who they were but or what they, they paid, are. But they paid us we no heed. We just continued right on. No heed whatsoever. Uh, they didn't pay to us. Just they, so they could have been ghosts. They right? could have been, yeah. They could have been, been something I mean, that we were looking at from the past. But it, but it was it was a rather there was no cars around. No, it was a rather was troubling thing to see, hmm. and we really didn't stop and go out. That's why. Well, those guys are know. carrying spears and battle axes <laughs> and everything. You don't stop to ask them what they're doing no, there. And everything they were using was Just primitive. Not. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think the next slide is, is something that's pretty amazing too. Zaitan, Egypt, Ed. That one. Yeah, oh, this was. Uh, this occurred in 1968, 1969. Now, what are we looking and at right what there? What you see over to the right there is a, an apparition of the Blessed Mother over St. Mary's Church in Zaitan, Egypt, which is just outside of Cairo. And they would watch this apparition move about the steeple of the church, and there would be two doves flying right above her head. But she would walk all around. She would put her hands up. And this picture here and film was taken by the Historical Society in, uh, in Zaitan. Zaitan, uh, no, from Cairo. Oh, from Cairo, And Kyra, um, sorry. hundreds of thousands of people witnessed this. It was quite a thing. There's a whole book on it. How long did that uh, happen? It lasted for two years. It did? Two mm -hmm. years, yeah. When? About when did it 68. Happen? 68. 68. Between 68 and 70. But even the little birds, wow. even the little doves, were all spirit. That they, wasn't like a 24-hour-a-day deal, though. No. It coming would appear around, like, say, 9 o'clock at night. And it would last for about 20 minutes. But there would be, at one point, I know there was 150,000 people surrounding that whole area watching this. That and it was rough. a Coptic you, church, Tony. A Coptic church. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, th that's a religion. I don't Greek know. Coptic, it's Coptic Coptic like church. a. It's not like the Greek Orthodox. Oh. It's the Greek Coptic oh, okay. church. Yeah. 
Do you think that was a supernatural event? Oh, or was it, positively, positively. Do you think it was a miraculous? Just as the Blessed Virgin appeared at Lourdes and Fatima, Garabandal, places like that, yes. It was definitely supernatural because there was no way that they could prove it to be anything else. Because Where's good things happened from it, perhaps? Yes, good there things There were miracles. Didn't. A lot of miracles occurred, right. Mm -hmm. we're, we're hearing more and more things regarding uh, visions, spiritual visions that are happening in different parts of the world. They don't seem to be making uh, it as public as they used to. And I really wonder why. Can you give an not, not just uh, miracles. Uh, we, we have an influx of cases right now that we've never had before. No. Of hauntings, of diabolical infestation. Uh, we've never had this kind of activity. All the time we've been in this work, and the cases are coming in every day now, and they're coming in from all over. So what do you think that, well, that means? I, the, well, the, well we're, the Blessed Mother, say, for instance, is occurring. For instance, um, today, when we were out to lunch with my brother and his wife, the people that own the restaurant are Italian, and they had been in Italy uh, to visit her, her mother because the mother had been in ill health. And the mother had had somewhat of a, a type of pulmonary problem during this big to-do, this big procession to honor uh, the Mother of God who had appeared in this village. Now, they, they had this whole big thing going on and just to honor her. And it wasn't ancient history that we're talking about. It was something that only happened I within think, the uh, last few years. On the 13th of this month, we will be going to a town not too far away from here where we were called in by a police officer in that particular town. And what he told us was that he was working his beat in this project. Mm -hmm. And that the people started talking about seeing a ghost, well, he was interested in the subject to a certain extent. And he started to question him. And what he found out was that there was a ghost of a young man who supposedly had been tortured and murdered in that particular project. and. Uh, he was screaming and yelling for help. Nobody paid attention to him. The victim. They opened the doors, they opened the windows, and just slammed them, and they paid no attention to this poor guy. That was 20 years ago. Uh, the culprits were caught, the murderers. Uh, they spent 13 years in prison. They were kids at the time. They are only 17. But they spent 13 years in prison. They're out now. But now, this young man who was tortured and murdered so terribly, we've seen the the morgue pictures and everything, you, you can't imagine what they did to this no, boy. No, you wouldn't want yeah. to, Tony. And, uh, no, you wouldn't want to. He is now coming back and he's telling these people that he wants them to tell the police about why they didn't help him. It seems that he's very disturbed about the fact that nobody came to his aid. Nobody helped him. There was not one good Samaritan anywhere. But see, wow. see yeah, if, I mean, the things, the very bad things going on in the world today uh, do make you wonder. But then the very good things, the very <coughs> spiritual things are occurring to let us know that they are still very much there, Tony. I think that's the important thing. But we're going to be trying to communicate with this young man on the 13th. But we'll have the people there who were involved who had seen him. Yes. They seen the spirit of this young man, just yes. like we look at that picture. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, they picked him out of a group of pictures of ten pictures. Yes. They picked him out. They picked him they out. They had never known the man. They had never seen they, him. They but did they picked a, him out. A, a mugshot wow. composite. Now remember, just like Gail, just the same as Gail, spirits are attracted to compassionate people. They're like attracts like. Mm -hmm. This woman who had her gardens and idolized this son of hers, she had to be a very good woman and she is attracted to someone like herself. How do you feel to know that this lady was attracted to you? <laughs> You I'm very flattered. Yeah. You should. She very flattered. You should feel very yeah. flattered. And now Gail is the type of woman who cares for children. And, and her son cared for children. And her son cared so that's for pretty, children. That's pretty amazing in itself right mm -hmm. there. Huh? See, so there's so a rapport there. There's you know. a definite rapport. Your aura shows the same type of sensitivity that her <coughs> husband had. Now, where this young man is concerned, uh, the case 
that you're going to be also working right. with us on, Gail. Uh, that young man that was killed so brutally, he appeared to only certain people, just mm. certain people that he would appear to. Now, we've met mm. these people who he appeared to. We've talked to them. Is there any connection between the people? They're, they're special people. Mm. They're Perceptive. very special people. They're, they're people-loving people. I think we have time. If this would be a good slide to end, uh, have that as the last slide for this program. Okay. It says, a statue of Mary crying tears. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we a can lot see of that, people Rob. say, uh, prove that the supernatural exists. Well, here's the proof. Now, this is a statue of the Blessed Mother, which is carved out of wood. Human tears are coming from the eyes. They analyzed it and they are human tears. Now, it is not a natural act for human tears to come out of wood, whether right. it's a statue or not. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, st the uh, tears would just flow out of the eyes of that statue. But also, there are also uh, pilgrim statues that bleed human mm -hmm. blood, mm -hmm. and they are analyzed as human blood. Now, they have taken every test that they can possibly take to prove that this is not any kind of hoax, any kind of a fraud. So there's your proof of the supernatural. There are so many skeptical societies and atheists, and I say to them, prove that that is a fraud. They can't. They cannot do it. Cannot prove, no. yeah. prove a fraud That That yeah. is a miraculous miracle that comes from God. Well, we're just about out of time. I'd like to thank Gail for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. Especially in this, this really lousy weather. Thanks for coming out and showing us these amazing it's photographs. It's a rainy, stormy night out there. Oh. <laughs> Perfect for tonight. <laughs> yeah, really. The thunder is still going. And Ed and Lorraine, once again, of course, thanks. But can you tell them how to uh, contact you again, Lorraine? Yes. Oh, and the mail we're getting, Tony, is phenomenal. We're also on the internet. Yes. www. I believe it's uh, Diana can help me out on that. Dot here. Dot com, right, com slash ghost. We'll, uh, next program, perhaps, we'll have the email address yeah, right there, the website. Great. The website address. And uh, it's P.O. Box 41 for mail, regular right. snail mail. Mm -hmm. uh, Monroe, Connecticut, 06468. And we do get some beautiful, beautiful letters. Beautiful letters. Just keep them coming. Keep yes, them coming, Yes, we ladies. really, really enjoy their mail. So for Lorraine Warren, for Ed Warren, for our special guest, Gail, mm -hmm. I'm Tony Spera. Good night. <laughs>